Hi, this is Sue Jackson of the Book by Book blog, and I'm here today with a tag video. The Booktuber Name Tag. This is a fun one. It was created by Erin Rita Book, and I was tagged by Melinda at a Web of Stories. So thank you to both of them. What Erin says about this tag is, these are all great channels that you should all subscribe to immediately if you haven't already. There are probably several hundred other channel names that would work as prompts, but these are the ones I thought of. So what he's done is taken some of the clever, fun booktube channel names and turned those into a prompt for the tag. Prompt one, books I'm not reading a book that's been on your TBR forever. I have a lot of those. <laughs> I decided to go with my physical TBR, which is extensive. And we did just get rid of a lot of books recently. We went through the shelf behind me and the shelves in our bedroom and including the TBR bookcase. There's an entire bookcase of TBR books. And I did get rid of some of the older ones that I've been meaning to read forever, there are just too many books. <laughs> and I know I won't get to all of them, so I did get rid of some. But this for this question, this is what stood out to me. The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara. Now, most people know her as the author of A Little Life, but I believe this novel came out before that, I don't know, maybe this was even her first novel. It is my mother's favorite book of all time. And she's the one that gave this to me. I don't know, probably almost 10 years ago now. I know, I feel horribly guilty about this. I put it at the top of my stack. I meant to get to it before Big Book Summer started. It's not a big book. Um, and I didn't. I will read this. I am pledging to you now. I will read this book before the end of the year. Okay, prompt two, novel idea. A book with an interesting premise or plot device. Okay, I thought this one was on the shelf behind me. I forgot to pull it ahead of time. Homegoing by Ya Gyasi. The unique thing about this book is that it follows eight generations of two branches of a family. Now, it's not a very big book. So the way the author does this is that each chapter focuses on one character's life. And as you go through the book, you move from one generation to the next, looking at a different character, sometimes even skipping a generation. So, um, when I started it, I wasn't sure what to think because I thought I'm not going to get to know these characters well enough. But she is an amazing writer and you do get to know the characters well. Um, until I recently read Lonesome Dove, this was my number one book of the year. So it's a very close second um, and definitely a unique premise that is beautifully executed. Prompt three, Revenant Reads, a book where someone has returned from the dead. So I actually really like books that feature ghosts. So I'm, I'm taking this to include ghosts or spirits because I don't read zombie books. Um, so I actually read quite a few of those and I was looking at some of the ones I've enjoyed in the past. One just recently, a YA novel, but I decided to go with my favorite group of ghost suspense stories. This is a whole series of books about people from the dead, returning from the dead, um, beginning with The Sense of Death. The series is by Maddie Dalrymple. It's called the Ann Kinnear Suspense Series. These are fabulous mystery thrillers. But the trick is that the main character, Anne Kinnear, can sense spirits and communicate with them. So in each case, she solves a mystery or more um, by communicating with the spirit. 
I love these books. They're, they're actually by a local author. I met her at a signing at our local bookstore. And once I read that first one, I was hooked. I've read these four. Um, my husband likes the series too. He's read the first three. I had to pull the fourth off of his TBR shelf. Prompt four, Criminali, a book where a crime takes place. I read plenty of mysteries and thrillers. That last series would apply to this as well. But um, actually for all of these prompts, I have tried to choose books that I don't hear talked about much on BookTube or elsewhere. Books that I really loved that don't get a lot of attention. So that's where I went with this because there were, there were hundreds of different mysteries and thrillers that I could have chosen. What I chose was When She Woke by Hilary Jordan. Now you may remember Hilary Jordan as the author of Mudbound, fabulous historical fiction. Here, this, this novel, or her second, was quite different from that. It is dystopian fiction about a world, our world, but slightly in the future, a dystopian version of our world that unfortunately some of the elements in the book make it seem all too possible. And in this world, criminals, to, to ease the, uh, the strain on the prison system, criminals are, their skin is dyed a color to match their crime. And it begins with a woman named Hannah waking up in a cell. You do spend the first part of your sentence in a cell so that they can observe you. And her skin is dyed red and red is for murder. So that's where it begins, but it is a fabulous uh, dystopian thriller. So it begins with a crime or an alleged crime. <laughs> Prompt five, book time with Elvis. A book about time, time travel, or someone named Elvis. So if you watch my channel, you would probably think I chose a book about time travel because just looking, or about time, because on the shelf behind me, we've got Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. We've got Kindred by Octavia Butler. Uh, somewhere on here, The Time Traveler's Wife. Connie Willis, right down there, blackout and all clear. I love time travel. But I went a different way with this question because last year I read a fabulous book with a main character named Elvis, and that is Rabbit Cake by Annie Hartnett. This is, Annie has a talent for writing novels that dig deep into interesting issues that everyone can relate to, difficult issues, but always with a wonderful sense of humor. So the main character here is 10-year-old Elvis, she was named after Elvis Presley because they share the same birthday. And right at the start of the novel, it's not a spoiler, right at the beginning, her mother dies. And so the book focuses on Elvis, but also her sister and her father and the way they each deal with their grief differently. It's a book about grief, but it is also hilariously funny. That's Annie Hartnett's particular talent. Prompt six, middle of the book, March. Your favorite book that you read in March. So I had to go back and look at my March wrap-up video. And it turned out I read a lot of good books in March. So I had trouble choosing. But I ended up going with The Invisible Girls by Sarah Labarge. This is a memoir that was incredibly moving and, and quite unique. It was about a young white woman, the author, who went through some horrible challenges in her own life. Very, very early onset breast cancer, double mastectomy, chemo and radiation, a bad breakup during her cancer treatment. She, her, her life was just pretty much destroyed. 
and she moved from the East Coast out to Seattle or Portland. I think it was Portland. And um, she's just trying to settle in there. She's got a double degree in, in, in journalism and as a physician's assistant. So she gets a job out there. She's riding the bus one day or the train. I think it was the train. And she meets this woman from Ghana. I might have the country wrong. If I do, I'll put it up here. Who has two little girls with her. The mother looks completely exhausted. The little girls are very playful and interested in Sarah. And she starts playing with them and talking to them. She ends up becoming friends with this mother. She's a recent immigrant. Her husband brought them over for his job and then left them. She actually has four little girls at home and she's completely on her own. She invites Sarah over to their apartment and the two women become friends and it's not hyperbole to say they each change each other's lives. So I was worried when I read the recap that this was going to be kind of a white savior thing. It's not at all. Sarah makes it clear that she was at a real low point in her own life and that this amazing woman and her beautiful little girls brought her back to life as well as her helping them. So wonderful, wonderful memoir. Prompt seven, Book Buds, a channel I really enjoy. A book with a great friendship. There were so many I could pick for this, but again, I tried to go for something that is lesser known, a book I really loved that I don't ever hear anyone else talking about. So I chose The Air You Breathe by Francis DuPont Peebles. Um, this is a novel. I'm trying to think when it begins, maybe the 1950s. It's about the strong, intense, very complex friendship between two women. They meet as little girls from completely opposite places in the world, uh, figuratively. They're in the same place, literally, but the one is uh, the little miss of a sugar plantation. It's set in Brazil. The other is the daughter of the cook at the plantation. So they're starting from completely different places, but they bond over their mutual love of music, which completely shapes their lives. It is an amazing story of friendship, of music. The setting in Brazil is incredible, delving into the history, the culture, the music. Really great novel. Prompt eight, Obscure Book Adventures. A book that you love that never gets talked about. Well, that's kind of been my whole theme here, but I picked one of my all time favorite books that I rarely hear other people talk about. And that is Hum If You Don't Know the Words by Bianca Murray. Now, the people who do know about this book are fellow booktopians because Bianca was a, Booktop a Booktopia author guest, not once, but twice. She's an amazing writer. And this, her first book, is my favorite still. This is set in South Africa. And it, it would fit the last prompt too because it is about a very unique friendship. It's about a nine-year-old girl. Both of her parents have just been killed. She's a white girl. And she goes to live with her aunt who works as a flight attendant. I believe it begins in the 19, 1970s. So she goes to live with her aunt, but her aunt's traveling a lot. Um, so her aunt hires some help in the form of a black woman who is not from the city. This takes place in Johannesburg but who has come to the city searching for her teenage daughter. And so she is not, she doesn't normally work as a maid or child carer or cook, but she's taken this job so that she can stay in the city because it's apartheid and they have rules about black people from outside the city staying there. So this allows her to stay in the city. Well, she and Robin, the little girl, her name's Beauty. Beauty and Robin develop an amazing friendship, 
but it's about so much more than that. It is amazing historical fiction about what's happening in South Africa at that time. It is a mystery about what happened to Beauty's daughter and her quest to find her. Um, it is very, very funny. Robin is a very precocious narrator. Um, and the things that adults say that she doesn't understand is a big source of humor here and just delightful. Fabulous book. Needs more attention. Prompt nine, Savage Reads. A book with a monster or beast or human acting monstrous or beastly. So um, this book is not little known. I'm sure lots of you have read it, um, but I don't read much fantasy. So I don't read much that features monsters or beasts. So I went with Human Beasts, In the Garden of Beasts, it's right there in the title, by Eric Larson. This is about, this is about the American ambassador to Germany who moved there with his family in the late 1930s, just as Hitler was beginning to rise in power. So obviously Hitler himself was a beast, but there are plenty of other people in this book acting beastly and in horrific ways. Um, excellent book, by the way, I love Eric Larson. Prompt 10, a book that fits your own channel name or the name of a channel that you love. Well, my own channel name is kind of boring. <laughs> Sue Jackson, it's my name. <laughs> Not a lot of books that go with that. Um, I named it that way, by the way, because I cover more than just books on my channel. I could have come up with something clever and bookish, but that wouldn't have made sense for the rest of my channel, which includes travel, the outdoors, chronic illness. So, Right, so I went with just my name. So I chose Miss Reads a lot, one of the first channels I discovered on BookTube and still one of my favorites. And I thought this was perfect as a prompt here, Miss Reads a lot. And the book I chose to fit that is Why We Read on Bookworms, Libraries, and Just One More Page Before Lights Out by Shannon Reed. I read this one on Kindle earlier this year. Shannon was a Booktopia author this year. Um, it is a nonfiction memoir all about reading, not only her own personal reading life, but all of her years as a teacher teaching high school literature, college literature, and creative writing, and um, it's a fabulous book. It is definitely about a woman who reads a lot and just filled with humor any book lover would relate to this. And finally, prompt 11, tag some other booktubers. So keeping with this theme of the little known, I went with some new booktubers or new-ish. These are all booktubers who I've discovered this summer because they've joined my Big Book Summer Challenge, which is still going on for another month, by the way. And I enjoyed discovering their channels, and I hope you will too. Um, some of them are very new to BookTube. Others have been at it um, for a while, but none of them I don't think is, has been on BookTube for a full year yet. So I am tagging Luke at Reading and Rambling. Luke literally just started his BookTube channel, so please go check it out. John's Book Reviews. John is located in Nigeria and he has very broad reading tastes. He reads in English, so many of the books that he reads are familiar, um, but I've really been enjoying his videos. Jay of Wind Hill Journal. Jay is located in Ontario. I just discovered his channel this week um, when he was talking about Big Book Summer. His channel features not only books and bookstores, but also nature, which I loved. I complimented him on that. And he actually told me that my channel was his inspiration for that. So I was very flattered by that. And finally, Nikki at My Messy Bookshelf. Nikki's been at BookTube a little longer than the others, but she's still relatively new and definitely I would love for you to go check out her channel as well. 
And finally, let me know in the comments down below if the title of your channel would work as a prompt or if you have an answer to any one of these questions or if you would just like to share a book that you don't think gets talked about much that you love.